now we have covered uh, all the core uh, part and i have told you what we will uh, get into uh, now the first part is compute okay so here what we will do we will uh, try to launch one instance first okay so i am coming over here and what will happen is so uh, first we have to do with, deal with uh, compute part okay the first part which is the compute part okay and in compute part uh, what we will learn let's see so in compute part uh, first we will learn how to launch an instance okay launch an instance i told you instance instance is nothing but a computer or maybe a laptop okay or some resources which are making uh, your machine okay so how to launch it the first thing will be how to launch it okay so after launching an instance we should make sure that uh, our work must be done using this instance okay uh, so we need to keep in mind that uh, whatsoever work we are about to do that must be done using this instance and that to in minimum cost okay work work must be done okay work must be done plus that to in minimum cost okay that to in minimum cost so what is happening over here is uh, if we will launch an instance so the key part will be that work must be done for which you are launching a, a, a aws instance and that to in the minimum cost okay so uh, the the key is uh, work work and the cost the work uh, completed should be uh, maybe uh, its amount should be high and the cost amount should be low okay so in low amount you have to do most of your work so to attain this to attain high high work and low cost what factor we need to consider okay what factor to consider so that our work will be maybe more and our cost will be less so what factor to consider okay to consider i am writing here cn okay so one must uh, must know factor is obviously you you need not to uh, take a under power machine neither you uh, neither you want a over power machine okay so you have to understand which kind of machine you have to uh, maybe uh, rent okay and what kind of instance by machine i need to just say what kind of instance you have to make that instance must not be under power uh, because that will not perform up to that mark or that must not be overpowered because uh, then what is the use of uh, maybe it, uh, having uh, maybe uh, 10 rupees if that work can be done in 1 rupees okay so uh, don't take a overpower machine maybe your work was being done using a cpu that was okay for you but you took a gpu and you are now paying more because you took a gpu so don't do that do don't do that do that now i am getting uh, into the various factors which one should consider before launching a uh, aws instance and the first factor is location uh, some of my system is not working fine that's why this is happening but that's okay uh, location okay the first factor will be location so aws have different uh, uh, maybe locations in the in the globe okay so as this is the globe so it can have different uh, data centers uh, anywhere in this globe okay depending on their maybe uh, depending on how compatible they are in the region so they have made different data centers okay so based on the location sometimes cost varies so first factor you need to consider is location here the key question is how to choose a better location so that our cost will be least okay so this factor you have to keep in mind then one more factor comes in uh, of operating system and i have told you operating system can be linux can be windows <coughs> sorry <coughs> uh, can be windows can be linux or can be uh, mac os okay next factor i will take here is the compute okay and memory compute and memory okay so how much compute power is required how many virtual cpus are required here you have to uh, think of virtual cpus okay and after that ram after that ram and after that if required the gpu okay you need to understand it either gpu is even required or not after uh, after considering location operating system compute uh, uh, compute and memory then uh, the next part which you have to consider is the storage factor okay uh, the storage factor you need to consider you need to ask one crucial question with you how much storage you will require okay you can scale it later uh, as per your demand but still uh, you only have to uh, maybe demand for required uh, storage only okay one more factor you need to uh, keep in mind is either the storage will be of sdd or will be that of hdd okay this is what you need to uh, maybe consider okay one of the crucial part is uh, again uh, i want to add is uh, pricing strategy this is the crucial part you need to keep in your head i'll take a bit to write it uh, pricing strategy okay and i'm writing it as pricing strategy okay so in pricing strategy you need to understand all the all the pricing strategy which aws is providing you and then 
you need to consider which pricing strategy is going to be good for you one more factor you can keep in mind is if you will buy more instances uh, maybe uh, what discount you can get okay what discount you can get and different pricing strategy you, you need to keep in mind what are the different uh, pricing strategy i'm i'm putting here rupee sign uh, before launching an instance uh, we need to think about uh, the instance it must not be underpowered and it uh, it must not be overpowered okay and the key factor was uh, work plus uh, minimum cost okay so work should be highest and the cost should be minimum okay so that was the key factor after that uh, uh, i dragged you to the uh, concept of a factor which we need to consider uh, to reduce our cost and first cost uh, first factor was location okay before getting into the location factor you need to understand the aws global infrastructure okay so you need to understand aws global infrastructure okay global infrastructure you need to understand okay as we have discussed earlier like uh, this is globe okay and uh, in some of the region uh, what cloud uh, provider do uh, they uh, take some of the regions and uh, they maybe they took this region and now they will put a lot of resources over here okay they will put a lot of resources over computer resource storage securities and everything okay so this is what they do and if you can recall it perfectly they call it a data center okay and now uh, what aws is uh, having aws is having different data centers in the globe okay in different uh, regions based on their uh, maybe comfort or based on their research they are having different data centers which are having different resources okay many resources on demand resources we can say so these data center are always up they are up 24 into 7 okay 24 into 7 and every day that the 365 day okay these data center are up and running every day 24 into 7 okay every day every every day of year and 24 into 7 okay day and night they are running and just uh, they are they are to serve uh, your requests okay so that's the thing so if they are running these data centers are running day, day, day in day out uh, 24 into 7 and 365 days so you need not to worry about the infrastructure okay you need to you need not to worry about the infrastructure uh, aws will take care of their infrastructure and everything okay just you need to worry about the cost factor in location okay that's why we are here to uh, maybe discuss more about on aws uh, global infrastructure the primary part which i want to uh, maybe discuss over here is region okay region okay so uh, let's say this is the globe this is the map of the globe and then uh, there are clusters okay there are clusters uh, where aws will make their uh, data center okay uh, this will totally depend upon the density so these are the these are those proper regions okay these are those proper regions in the uh, globe okay so aws uh, takes a strategy if the traffic demand is very high in some regions okay or in some area uh, then uh, aws will make one data center over there okay this is this is the uh, maybe this is the easiest thing they can do okay this is their strategy if uh, maybe if in this region there is uh, in in this part uh, there is a lot of uh, traffic or demand then they will make one data center over there okay so that is the strategy they follow in different region data centers are connected with each other using high speed fiber cables okay these are the fiber cable uh, maybe this is mumbai okay this is mumbai and uh, this is maybe usa or maybe this is russia so data center will be connected with each other uh, using fiber cables okay to make this example more valid so this is mumbai and this is delhi let's say okay so let's say uh, in delhi there is a huge demand of resources and in mumbai there is a huge demand of resources so what aws uh, uh, have done they have created two region over here two data center over here and these data center are connected with uh, fiber optics okay uh, for the uh, maybe easy and fast uh, transmission of data but what will happen is these two regions are totally isolated with each other okay they are totally isolated with e each other though they are connected but you cannot uh, uh, maybe transfer data or you cannot uh, leak the data uh, if there is no permission for the data transfer so uh, you cannot transfer the data so that's the security part they consider okay they take care of this i guess the region factor is clear to you now we will come to the second point that is availability zone that is availability zone okay availability zone we, we will discuss more on it so what happened let's take one example uh, in mumbai say you are having uh, 10 buildings at a particular location okay so what aws will do it will uh, based on the region and their distances and uh, uh, keeping in mind the latency the latency should be least uh, so what they will do is uh, they will not set up all data center in one building what they will do uh, within a certain range they will divide the data centers okay like this within a certain range let's say there will be a disaster and one data center will collapse so other will work for you okay other can uh, do the uh, the same task which the collapse one was doing so this is how uh, they uh, they uh, maybe decide their availability zone or the, these data centers will be within certain ranges so that their uh, latency will be lowest okay so these these data center within a a certain region i told you th this region is mumbai okay this uh, region is mumbai so we will call this availability zone okay 
these many data center are within a certain range so that uh, their latency is least uh, so they are called availability zone okay these are availability zone so inside mumbai there are a lot of data centers so that if one will collapse uh, uh, other other can run uh, independently for you and uh, they can help you maybe with your work uh, your work will not be hindered hindered so uh, this all uh, reason uh, this all reason in mumbai that is called availability zone okay just to add to your knowledge uh, right now aws is having 25 regions and uh, regions okay you, you can understand regions different region mumbai region delhi region which i so so do using example and after that it has uh, 80 availability zone then you can imagine av availability zone uh, uh, from this example okay and uh, it is uh, more than in 245 country and territories okay so this was something add to your knowledge uh, now this was the theoretical part uh, now uh, let me zoom in a bit and uh, let's let's see from here which let me fix it first uh, now we will see what factor to uh, consider before uh, selecting a region for your aws application okay for your aws instance i will say or application uh, how to select the region what are those uh, different factor okay how to select the region and then here comes some of the points first point will be so what are uh, different data govern governance uh, rules and uh, maybe what your laws are saying in which country you are and what your laws are saying maybe your country don't allow you to uh, maybe save your data outside of your region or outside your country then you have to uh, keep in mind these kind of stuff okay say china don't want their data to be leaked or uh, china don't want their data uh, to get into uh, any server which is outside their region okay so in that condition uh, if you are in china then what you will do you will uh, choose some of the data center which are within the region not globally uh, you need not to choose uh, data centers globally okay next thing you need to consider is proxim uh, proximity okay proximity okay if the proximity will be least okay proximity uh, if i'll take one example proximity if i'll take one example say your user uh, lives uh, more user lives in mumbai region okay in maybe east uh, east region so uh, you need to put one uh, data center over there so the proximity will be least if the proximity will be least then the data transfer uh, will like data will be transferred in a least amount of time okay so that will be useful for the user so if the proximity consider the proximity of user if the region is more denser uh, you, uh, you need to maybe put one data center over there so if maybe 90 percent of your or uh, maybe 80 percent of your traffic is coming from mumbai east then you, you need to choose one data center which is near to mumbai east or which is in uh, mumbai east okay that will be useful for your customer why even we are considering proximity because it will reduce the latency and if latency will be reduced then uh, uh, data transfer will be faster okay and that will be useful for the users to be precise and then you have to consider the services which are maybe services availability i will say okay uh, services availability services i will write it available okay services availability you need to see some of the region don't have uh, every service okay some of the region are constrained to some of the services so you need to keep in mind this factor too one good example will be aws bracket so that is used for quantum computing and uh, you cannot access that uh, from every region there are some certain region which provide that aws bracket okay so uh, this can be a good example to understand service availability zones the last factor i will say is pricing okay pricing it is again the uh, maybe crucial thing to keep in mind so let's say in brazil there is a, uh, like uh, if we'll connect to some of the region in brazil the taxation is very high so that will cost you uh, uh, maybe big bucks so you need uh, it can be worked as a good example okay so keep these things in your mind then you can explore more on yourself okay so up till now we have covered two points that is region and availability zone okay uh, now the third point which i want to include over here is the edge point okay we have covered uh, maybe region and availability zone then i will cover over edge point no problem i will get into it and i will ex i will try to explain it okay so that's the edge point let me drag everything up now okay allow me to drag it now we are uh, here to discuss the edge point okay see to understand the edge point consider a scenario so you uh, your customer is in mumbai okay your customer is in mumbai and maybe you are operating from us okay now the now the proximity is very high okay and the latency will be very high okay so what will happen you are while using your app there will be some delays okay uh, this is mumbai and this is usa okay so this is uh, your customer in mumbai and uh, maybe uh, this is your app which is operating from uh, maybe uh, in usa okay from some data center in usa so the proximity will be high and uh, there will be some lag so this will not be good for uh, maybe your app and your business so here comes the concept of end point okay end point here comes the concept of end point okay so what happens in end point is using the end point we can make caches cache of our data okay uh, to the closest region so in mumbai there are some closest region we will make cache of our data over here cache is a small part of, part of our data okay we will make a small part data 
a small part of our data and then uh, we will uh, if the customer will demand something we will provide him using the caches and meanwhile we will load other data okay which we think will uh, that customer will demand uh, used on is maybe uses uh, statics okay these caches are connected uh, to the main data center using the cdn okay and uh, using the cdn you need not to go into it but again i'm explaining it so this cache will be connected to the data center using the cdn and what is cdn cdn is content delivery network okay so uh, it is used by maybe aws amazon called it amazon cloud front okay amazon called it <coughs> uh, amazon cloud front okay this is called as amazon cloud uh, amazon cloud front so its use is to deliver content to the user and that content uh, can be uh, through apis that content can be uh, maybe images that content can be uh, videos okay and the concept is their latency will be low okay and transfer speed will be high this is uh, uh, like latency and transfer speed the latency there will be least latency okay cdn reduces the latency and increases the transfer rate okay and increases the transfer rate now you can understand what is uh, what is the use of cdn why it is called the uh, cloud front of aws okay now the site which amazon cloud front uses Uh, to save your uh, caches uh, uh, maybe to save your caches where your user is or maybe closer to your user okay and that is called endpoint okay so let me come up again so what is happening is uh, maybe your app is launched in uh, us region and uh, your user are in mumbai region so what will happen there will be high latency and the transfer rate of uh, data will be least okay so there can be some glitches okay uh, to uh, to maybe uh, resolve this uh, Uh, amazon used the cloud front and that is the cdn okay so cdn is content delivery network so what uh, what cdn does cdn uh, using the apis or the images or the videos what whatsoever data is coming what it does uh, it it um, it helps in low latency and to increase the transfer rate of the data so that uh, uh, there will be no glitch uh, between the user and the hosted application okay so what uh, what happens over here is the cloud front uses the site Uh, which is known uh, which stores the caches uh, uh, near to your user okay and that site is known as endpoint okay so that's the thing that's the whole concept of endpoint uh, that's all for this video i'll see you in the next video